But let's focus, shall we, on the Women's World Cup. It went to penalties against Sweden, 0-0 after 120 minutes. Megan Rapino missed her. Smith had a chance to win and book a place in the quarterfinals, but her penalty was then saved. We saw O'Hara step up and miss hers. It was all then down to Lena Hurtig. It looked like it had just been enough from the US goalkeeper to keep the ball out. However, take a look how close wow. that was. The ball wow. just millimeters just Whisker. crosses the line and that is enough to see Sweden advance to the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Meanwhile for the US they are out. Uh, this is their worst performance ever in a World Cup. Of course they went into this looking for a three-peat. It's not going to happen uh, this time round. They are out of the round of 16. So much to talk about as we go to seven our team. Thank you very much, Dan. Yeah, the U.S. out at the round of 16 at the World Cup for the first time ever. Alexis Nunez was in Australia to witness it live. But Ali Krieger, somebody who has won this event twice with this team, I feel compelled to start with you. What you make of the U.S. going out to Sweden? It's, uh, it's devastating. I'm so gutted for the team. I thought they actually finally played, um, you know, some, some good football today. They were on their front foot. Um, and they created chances. It just didn't get into the back of the net, which is what they've been struggling this entire tournament, in my opinion. But I was actually impressed on how they came out. So it is disappointing um, the way that, that it happened uh, in PKs. Alexis, you saw it all unfold live. What did you make of this, and how did it compare to maybe the three other performances that you got to see in New Zealand? Oh, yes, Abby, this was by far the best performance that we finally saw of the U.S. women's national team. Literally, like, within the first 10, 15 minutes, I think I turned to our producer and I said, this is it. Like, they finally woke up. They're showing up. They're showing out. They're playing well. And I remember when uh, Lindsay Horan in the Match Day Minus 2 press conference said that I think they were in their heads a lot in the group stages and they almost forgot why they were doing this because of joy. She said, we just need to play with more joy and just enjoy ourselves. And that really showed today. They seemed to relax a bit more, but still managed to turn it up. They dominated as well in position, had many chances. I mean, massive props to Sweden's keeper because she absolutely saved them um, a couple of times where the U.S. probably should have easily been up by two goals. But once again, we're talking about goals that should have been. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. And that's just been the, the theme since the very first match against Vietnam. And, you know, it was Megan Rapinoe who afterwards told me that you can say this is an unfair ending, but she said, I don't think there's unfair endings in, in football because you have to take your chances. You have to put the ball in the back of the net in knockouts. And once again, the U.S. just failed to do that. Ali, you know, a lot was made of the lineup choices and beyond that, really, the substitution choices for Vladko and Anofsky during the group phase. What do you think of the lineup choices he made in this game against Sweden, especially in midfield, where he had to make up for the absence of Rose Lavelle? Of course. I actually wasn't disappointed with his decision after seeing how Sonnen and Andy Sullivan worked together with, you know, not allowing the ball to be played through those gaps, which I think we've been struggling with. Um, in the previous three games. So I think they did fairly well. They were switching the point of attack, finding Lindsay Horan open, um, you know, in the, in the wide areas to be able to build the attack from one side to the next. So I do think that was really valuable and that was a really good decision. I was a little skeptical. I wasn't sure how they were gonna come out, but I do think that that was a really good choice. I think they solidified it and really built that confidence being able to, you know, have the opportunities in the final third. Uh, once again, it just was disappointing. Um, just like Alexis said, that you know we, we need to score goals in order to win games. If you're not going to put the ball in the back of the net, you can't move on. And um, unfortunately, that was the case for today. But I was I was happy with that decision after seeing how you know uh, Emily Sonnet and Andy Sullivan handled the midfield tonight. Ultimately, Ali, why do you think the U.S. is going home at the round of 16? I just don't think there was enough bite. I don't think, yeah, there wasn't enough joy, like Lindsay had mentioned. I think that, um, you know, the lever that people, you know, needed to pull, put down and just let loose just wasn't happening. They needed to just um, turn, up, turn up a bit and, and, and show up and show out. And I just don't think they had that bite that we normally do. And unfortunately, you can only last so long through this tournament when you're playing the best of the best. And, you know, good teams uh, are, are going to beat you when you're not going to show up and, and really perform the way that you should. 
And, and that is the reason. Also, you got to be clinical in front of the net. If you're not going to score goals, like I said, you can't win games. And I think at the end of the day, that's what I feel the team is going to be most disappointed about. Because tonight we did create this, those chances. They were there. Um, but, you know, in the final third, uh, once again, we just really struggled um, to find the back of the net and, and to win the game early on. Alexis, you're there. You got to talk to a lot of the players in the aftermath. What are they saying? Yes, I mean, it was definitely one of the more difficult mixed zones I think that I've had to do uh, in my career because a lot of the players were understandably inconsolable. Sophia Smith couldn't even stop to to get um, a word out. She was just taken immediately to the bus. And you understand she's such a special player. So to go out like this and this early when we know she has so much to give definitely was difficult to see. But I did get to speak to quite a few more, starting with Julie Ertz, about just how difficult this loss is. Feel like you're dominating the game, playing well, but at the end of the day, if you're not finishing your goals, it makes it tough on yourself. Um, so yeah, I think it's emotional. One, I think this will, you know, hurt for a while. It's really hard to swallow um, this game. Um, uh, I, I felt like in the run of play, we did really well. We broke them down extremely well. Um, we limited them um, in front of, in front of our own goal so yeah it's it's hard to lose on penalties but um we didn't put it away in the you know in the game and that's what happens there's nothing bad i could say about our performance obviously we want to finish the chances and and we want to win this game but this is football you know we could go play the best you know u.s style and everything that everyone wanted to see and and then we end up going into penalties so it is what it is i'm proud of every player that's uh that stood up took a penalty we make some, we miss, you know, opportunities and it sucks. It's, it's, you know, painful. It's going to be painful, but very, very proud of this team. Is this the last time we're seeing you in this shirt? Um, I'm not planning to hang up my boots anytime soon right now. So just one day at a time now. The future is in absolutely great hands. You know, um, sometimes you learn the most from your failures, which sucks, but it's part of my career as well. And um, yeah, unfortunately, this is my last time in this crest, so I'm excited for them in the future. Well, thank you for all the football you've given us, Julie. Does this feel like an unfair result, considering you guys dominated for so much? I don't think there are unfair results in football, you know? Like, it doesn't matter if you dominate. Um, you know, I felt like we controlled the game, but that doesn't win games. And at the end of the day, you got to put the ball in the back of the net. So. Um, yeah, it sucks. Um, it's tough um, because we, you know, we we finally played with a lot of joy and we're able to express ourselves and, you know, so proud of the group for that. I thought we played so well and just controlled the game and, um, you know, there was so much more in it for us. But, you know, it's it's never given. So, um, yeah, it's a it's a tough one and there's just some some dark dark comedy in me missing a penalty in my last game ever. So. Yeah, because yeah, I was saying with the smile, I mean, was that just pretty much a message that that's football, that's life, things happen? I mean, that's a sick joke. That's just like, yeah, I mean, that's a sick joke. I just, I can't believe that. I just like, I never even, I never even hit them over ever when they're saved. So, yeah, I mean, that's just how it goes. Well, always a pleasure to catch up there with a legend that is uh, Megan Rapino. It's absolutely gutting to know that this is her uh, last World Cup and game for the U.S. Women's National Team. I mean, this really feels like the end of an era, Sebi. And this is for me, and I'm not even an American, but the U.S. Women's National Team has made the world fall in love with the game. So I definitely have to ask you how you're feeling, because I feel like you, you, you have a rant or two in you, don't you? <laughs> Well, I think, I think there's a lot of disappointment, but I don't think there's a lot of surprise uh, in this U.S. team going out. I wonder, Ali, if you agree with what Alexis says there. Do you feel like this is the end of an era? We know at least Megan Rapinoe for sure is not coming back. Yes, and I mean, the future is so bright, right? I think there's, you know... Um just new pages to be written and new chapters to be to be read with with our team. And I think, um, yeah, it's an end of an era because we have just 
been back to back champions. And I feel like everyone's just used to that. Right. But the whole world you could see is catching up and teams are just, you know, getting so much better and there's more investment and just to see women's football um, on such a high standard around the world is, is pretty incredible. And to know that like we've helped build that and really encourage and inspire everyone to to want to keep up, to want to be better, um, to put in the money, you know, where their mouth is and to really support women's football. And now you see the evidence of that. Now you see the results and, and it's so rewarding whether we, whether we win or lose, it's, um, it's getting to a place where, um, you know, female footballers really deserve um, everything that they're receiving. Uh, it's unfortunate the way that we went out, but yes, it's, it might be an end of an era, but then there's a whole new chapter in, in book that can be read with this U.S. Women's National Team because the future with these young players is so, so bright, and I just can't wait to continue to be a fan and, and watch um, the future just grow and, and blossom. Allie, if we do believe that the, the rest of the world has caught up, and certainly this tournament would suggest there's, there's plenty evidence of that, what does the U.S. have to do as a program, as individual players, to kind of get back on top? What changes have to be made? And I think we can maybe even start with the position of the manager, Vladko Inanovsky. Do you feel like he's done enough uh, to come back after this tournament and the Tokyo Olympics? To be honest, no, I, I don't. I think we need. I think we need a fresh start. I think we need, um, you know, a change for sure uh, in the leadership position, a hundred percent. I think, um, you know, he's ran its course and. Um, obviously, you know, it's been two disappointing tournaments, in my opinion. Um, and I think that there needs to be kind of a fresh start um, for these younger players to really um, get back to where where we should be. And it's, a, an, ex it's an exciting time. So, you know, I don't want to take that away from, from us. Just because we lost today doesn't mean we're not going to win in the future and it's going to get back to where or even better than we could ever imagine. So I, I do believe that we need a change. Um, and I think that everyone can just be proud um, of where we've taken football around the world. I think we've inspired everyone to just, like I said, be better and to put more money into women um, in sports. And so I think that's something that we can take away from this. And to see everyone else do so well and that there's going to be a new winner is um is also really uh, inspiring for, for a lot of young players to see that their dreams can come true too, as long as they put in that work. And um, it's not only one-sided year after year. All right, Ali, great stuff. Alexis, as always, good to have you with us. This time from Australia, as the U.S. Women's National Team goes out to Sweden via penalty kick shootout in the round of 16 at the World Cup. Dan, back to you. Thank you very much. More reaction as well. This is uh, on the full-time whistle. Kay, Jules, Jeff and Sophie breaking it all down. Everyone quite positive about it all, considering uh, what a shocking result it is. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.